The Deadly Mountain Tragedy Death of Marc-André Leclerc on Torre Ego It was a climb that Marc-André Leclerc had dreamt of for years. Torre Ego, the imposing granite spire in Patagonia, was both his ultimate challenge and his greatest passion. But on that fateful day, the mountain that had brought him so much joy and fulfillment turned into a deadly trap. In a tragic twist of fate, Mark's love for the mountains became the very thing that took his life. This is the story of the deadly mountain tragedy that shook the climbing community to its core and the legacy that Mark left behind. Explore the mysterious circumstances surrounding the tragic death of a mountaineering legend with us as we go into the core of one of the most riveting mountaineering stories of our time. Mark Andre Leclerc was born in Fraser Valley, British Columbia, Canada on October 10, 1992 to Michelle Kuypers and Serge Leclerc. He was diagnosed with ADHD and struggled in school in his early years. As a result, his mother took him to the mountains or forest to identify rocks and flora. These events had a lasting impact on the boy. When his grandfather gave him Chris Bonington's book, Quest for Adventure, he fell in love with climbing. At the age of nine, he had his first climbing experience on a wall in a retail center. Isn't that shocking? Leclerc's family relocated to Agassiz near the Cascade Mountains in 2005. Marc Andre started learning how to mountain climb here by bicycling out to the Harrison Bluffs and spending the night there. He began on his own in tennis shoes with minimal formal training. Then Leclerc went to Squamish, British Columbia after graduating from high school. Here, he spent time living in a stairwell, which he improved after meeting his partner, Brett Harrington, who is also a talented free soloist. The two would create a friendship that would help Leclerc rediscover his love for climbing. But, as we all know, mostly true love is incomplete. Something happened that broke everyone's heart. In March 2018, Marc Andre Leclerc and Ryan Johnson set out to conquer the north face of the Mendenhall Towers in Juneau, Alaska. They successfully topped out a new route, but as they begun their descent, something went terribly wrong. The fate of the two climbers remains a mystery, but the outcome is heart wrenching. After Marc Andre's girlfriend had not heard from him at the expected time, she told the mountain rescue team and then they began their search, but bad weather forced them to call it off. The waiting and agonizing until a breakthrough finally came. Using a RECO detector, a specialized search and rescue machine, a signal was detected from a piece of climbing equipment or metal about 15 feet under the snow. It lined up with where the two climbers would have been if caught by an avalanche. The cause of the tragedy remains unknown. Whether a falling rock, a breaking cornice, or falling ice caused the avalanche, we may never know. But what is certain is that the mountain claimed the lives of two remarkable individuals as they descended, burying them under an unforgiving blanket of snow. The loss of Marc Andre and Ryan is a stark reminder of the dangers that climbers face in pursuit of their passion. But it's also a testament to the unrelenting spirit of human nature, to the courage and determination that drives us to push beyond our limits, to explore the unknown, and to live life to the fullest, even in the face of adversity. Marc Andre Leclerc will be remembered as a pioneering alpinist, adventurer, and rock and ice master, and also as a bit of a mystery. He did a lot of his best work alone and without a camera. Nobody can predict what Marc Andre Leclerc will become in terms of legacy. He climbed at the highest levels, across disciplines, and for the most important reasons. He did it, though, not for awards, magazine publicity, money, celebrity, or attention. He climbed because it made him happy. We were going to end with a solemn question from Leclerc himself. Therefore, we decided against it. Instead, here's a quotation from his blog post after completing Mount Sliss's East Ridge, Navigator Wall, and Northeast Buttress in just over 12 hours. I feel like a cat. I feel like a ninja. I feel like a ninja cat. An alpine ninja cat. That's a great feeling, mate. R.I.P. If you've been moved by this story, we urge you to honor the memory of Mark, Andre, and Ryan by cherishing your own life, pursuing your dreams with passion, and never taking a single moment for granted. And if you want to continue exploring the world's most breathtaking landscapes, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more riveting stories like this. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you soon on our next adventure.